forward to the impact he'll have on our program. Uh, I think for us as a team and, and especially as a program, uh, we look to capitalize on the momentum that was created uh, in the final months of the season last year uh, with uh, some of those big wins over uh, great programs like Kentucky, South Carolina, uh, enable us to finish in the top half of the SEC, uh, tried to transcend that into a great recruiting class, a top 10 class of uh, three really talented freshmen, and then we signed three senior guards out of the portal, the aforementioned Cam Carter, Jai Bailey from Richmond, and then Jordan Sears from UT Martin. Uh, and now try, trying to continue to build on that with another top 10 class and uh, just really excited about the direction of the program. Uh, so with that, love to open it up for any questions. All right, raise your hand if you have a question and we'll get one of the remote mics to you and a reminder to please identify yourself and the outlet you represent. Let's start right in the middle on the front row. Uh, Anthony Christensen with the Whole Hog Sports. Uh, obviously, you mentioned Jordan Sears there making the jump from UT Martin in the Ohio Valley to the SEC. Same jump you made when you left Murray State for LSU. Just what are the challenges that kind of come with that jump, and how have you seen him kind of take that on? Yeah, I love Jordan Sears. You know, of the 5,000 plus college players in the country, uh, a year ago he was the only one with 650 points, 140 rebounds, 140 assists, and 75 made threes. Uh, he knows as well as all of us. Now it's how's that translate as he makes the jump uh, to the SEC. Uh, I, I think it starts with his mentality. He has great toughness, uh, really explosive point guard, uh, shoots the ball well with range. Uh, I think the big adjustment when you come into the SEC, it's the number one shot blocking league in the country. So uh, has great quickness and speed, ability to get in the lane. Uh, when you get into the paint, you got to be able to make great decisions because of the, the tremendous rim protection in this league. So I think that'll be part of the adjustment for him, but uh, he, he's been terrific, and I expect him to have a big year for us. All right, raise your hand if you have other questions. Let's go to the third row on the right. James Fletcher from On3. I'm curious, with a, a guy like Will Baker and others uh, who come back after transferring in, for a second year in your program, how valuable are they not only being somebody that you kind of handpicked uh, to fill a role, but now they can kind of teach others and they, they're familiar with your system after a full year? Well, I, I think not to overcomplicate it, but you really have three different areas as you're constructing your, your roster now in today's game. You know, it starts with the player retention, uh, the first bucket, second bucket is the portal, and then third, the high school route. But uh, we really love the player development piece. Uh, so I, I love being able to bring players in and have them in the program multiple years. That's why I talked about Jalen Reed when we first got started. I uh, just love his growth and development. Uh, I think our new strength coach, Mike Chapman, has done a tremendous job with him. He's now 250 pounds. He's moving better than he ever has before. And I expect him to take another big jump. You know, he, he went to not shooting the three as a freshman. Last year he shot it at 39%. Now I want to see him get a higher volume of threes uh, in addition to his ability to attack the rim and finish. I think Mike Williams is a guy who averaged eight a game as a freshman, shot at 38% from three, uh, has had a great offseason in the player development program, and really has emerged as a leader on the team. I think in these, this new era of college basketball, really identifying leaders in your program can be challenging, and Mike's a guy that stepped up for us uh, so I think that retention piece is incredibly important. Okay, raise your hand. Other questions? Let's go to the middle, almost the end of the last row there. Yeah. Reed Darcy with the ad feed. Coach, I wanted to ask you about a couple guys we didn't see play last year, Damian Collins and Corey Chess. What can we expect to see from them this season? Yeah, really excited about both. Uh, Damian got off to a little bit of a slow start. He ended up needing shoulder surgery. He's been fully cleared uh, 100%. He's been a full go since uh, the 1st of August. Uh, but 6'9", 7'5", wingspan, really a once-in-a-lifetime athlete. I'll probably never coach someone like him again uh, from his speed and his, his verticality at the basket. He's gotten stronger uh, in the weight room. Uh, I, I think he's put himself in a position to, to really have a breakout type season. Corey Chest, one of the best instinctual rebounders I've had the opportunity to coach. He just has a great motor and energy. 
chases rebounds both ends of the court. Uh, I think when you look at our front court, both Damian and Corey are, are certainly guys that will be big factors for us. Raise your hand. Other questions for Coach McMahon? Let's go to the left side, second row. Jack Pilgrim, KSR. Uh, just your thoughts on Mark Pope taking over the Kentucky program, obviously an uh, in interesting transition for, for everybody in, in the league. And also just want to kind of dig in a little bit more on Damian, his story, what he's gone through. Some, just how have you seen him grow uh, you know, mentally and you know, maturity and th things like that? I think touching on Damian first, uh, you know the story of, of, about the tragic passing of his father during his time at Kentucky. Uh, can't imagine what that was like for him. Uh, I, I think now a, a year under his belt in LSU, he seems very comfortable. Uh, he seems like he's really settled in and is ready to move forward uh, with his basketball career. I think he's uh, really matured. Um, but again, just a once in a lifetime athlete. And his skill set is good. I mean, he, he can hit a catch and shoot three. He's got great hands around the basket. He's a great rim threat as a roller in our ball screen offense. And then his shot blocking presence uh, is going to be important for us. As you know, in this league, you have to have rim protection. So I'm really excited for him. Uh, I think he's handled adversity. Uh, incredibly well and put himself in a position to have a, a breakout season for us. Uh, Coach Pope, just familiar with the way they played at BYU, uh, the pace of play, the spacing, uh, the importance of the three-point shot. I thought they did a great job uh, going out in the spring and, and through the transfer portal, adding experienced players that have proven themselves at the highest level, and I expect them to be really good. Other questions? Let's go to the third row, left side. Coach Neil Blackman, Saturday Down South. Obviously, you guys return a, a good nucleus from a group that, that defended a lot better. I think Bartorvik had you in like the top 30 the last month of the season defensively. How do you carry that over into this year with, with the new faces in the, in the kind of roster construction world of the portal? Well, we tried to be very intentional there. I, I mentioned the three portal seniors that we added and Jai Bailey and, and Sears and also Cam Carter, 45 points a game uh, between them. But if you look at their defensive numbers, you know, Jai Bailey was second in the Atlantic 10 in steals, incredibly high IQ basketball player. Uh, I think he'll really impact us on the defensive side. Uh, Cam Carter was an elite defender on a top 20 defense in the country. Uh, so we tried to identify not only our needs offensively, but uh, we know how good the guards are in this league. And if you can't defend on the perimeter, you have no chance. Uh, so we have to continue to build on it. Uh, some of the guys that have been asked about, you know, how do we protect the rim? Uh, we're built, constructed a little differently in our front court. Uh, not a lot of 260, 270 pounders. We're more long, athletic high motor, high energy guys. And uh, so I think our pace of play needs to reflect that. Raise your hand, other questions? Let's go to the middle, fourth row. Uh, Peter Routerkiss with AL.com. Coach, you've coached against Jani Broom both when you were at Murray State and he was at Moorhead and now in the SEC. Just what kind of challenges does he bring, you know, matchup wise? Yeah, it seems like it's been a decade or so coaching against him, but uh, just you've seen his game grow and develop. You know, he's always been a dominant scorer around the rim. You look back at that Moorhead State team, uh, one of the best shot blockers in the country, and that's clearly translated here at the SEC level. Uh, but you now you see him shooting the three with time. Uh, the system's a great fit for him at Auburn uh, with some of the things they do scheme-wise to get him the ball and not only on the block but in the mid post area where he can score over either shoulder so uh, you know, I think there's a reason why a lot of people say he's the best big man in all of college basketball. Other questions? Go third row in the middle. Hey coach Brad Harvey from College Sportscast. I wanted to ask you about Jalen Reed. He's going to his junior year. Um, just how you expect to see his growth this year and how important he's going to be for you guys this year? Uh, 
incredibly important. I believe in him. I love him. He's uh, about the right things. He's really why you get into coaching. Uh, very smart. It means something to him. He really cares. So he works extremely hard to try and become the best player he can be. I, I think he's really matured this offseason as he enters year three. Uh, I mentioned in my opening, he's gained 15 pounds of muscle, but I think he's moving better than he ever has before. Uh, I, I think he's a guy that will depend on heavily, uh, not only for his ability to score off the bounce, but I think he's a unique player at 6'10", 250 that can create offense for his teammates. Uh, he knows he has to lower his turnover rate. It was way too high a year ago. Uh, and then I also mentioned you know, his three-point shooting. He really was not a threat his freshman year. <laughs> Last year as a sophomore, 39%, shot it really well. I uh, want to see him increase that three-point volume. Uh, doesn't need to take 10 or 12 a game, but would like to see him shoot it more uh, because he's really worked hard to develop into a good three-point shooter. All right, next question. Let's go to the front row in the middle. Drew DeArmond, WZZN Radio, Huntsville, Alabama. Coach, I wanted to ask you about the staff additions. Uh, I know you hired a new associate head coach and, of course, uh, Jalen Courtney Williams as well. Uh, just talk about those additions to your staff and what they bring. It's been awesome for us. I think when you're hiring uh, staff members, you're looking to add new energy, uh, new ideas, new experiences, uh, obviously recruiting connections in, in this profession. Uh, but we were able to hire two of the best in the business. And uh, David Patrick, who's you know, twice been a head coach, he's uh, been a part of Elite Eight teams. He's recruited and developed the number one pick in the NBA draft. He's had multiple guys uh, in the first round. Uh, has really brought a lot to our team and our program. Uh, was also an assistant coach for Australia this past year in the Olympics, uh, joining Mark Few as the only two college coaches in the uh, Olympics this year. And then Jalen Courtney Williams, guy uh, who played, started his career at LSU as a player. Uh, loves Baton Rouge, uh, great charisma, great personality, uh, high energy coach on the floor, very good teacher. Uh, I'm thrilled about both and the impact they've made on our program and, and I think both understand the value and importance of relationships and player development. Uh, and then the third that I mentioned, our, our new strength coach who comes to us from Stanford, Mike Chapman, Baton Rouge native, uh, but has been just doing an outstanding job with our players. I, th I think we're in the best shape we've ever been in during my time at LSU. I, I mentioned Jalen Reed, Damian Collins, some of those gains in the weight room. So all three incredibly impactful and, and will continue to be moving forward. We have time for one more question. Anyone? Last call. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, thanks so much.